What's up guys, I'm BTC. There is trouble ahead with those that seek to disrupt the world. We need you to become the next Overwatch agent. Or at least, that's what I would like to see happen. What am I talking about? Well, Blizzard has created this amazing replay system, and while it does have some pretty cool uses already, one of the best possible uses for it would be to tackle two of the biggest problems plaguing Overwatch right now, throwers and cheaters. Here's that image that I showed at the beginning of the video. I think that this is something that Blizzard definitely should consider adding to the game because it would have a massive positive impact on it. This is one of those videos that I really hope Blizzard sees, so please make sure to like and share. So what I'm going to do is explain the problem, show why the existing system doesn't quite do what it needs to, and then finally propose some solutions. So the idea of a player review system is not new. I definitely didn't invent it, and I'm going to readily admit that big parts of what I'm going to suggest comes from another game called CSGO. But with enough modification, I think that it can be made to work quite well in Overwatch. In CSGO, there is a player review system which is called Overwatch. I'm I'm not kidding, that's actually what it's called. The idea behind the system is quite simple. It seeks to resolve three major problems. One, there are far too many players and far too many reports for the game company to investigate all of them. Two, automated systems are easy to abuse and quite ineffective when it comes to things like throwing, griefing, or gameplay sabotage in general. And three, the longer it takes to deal with troublesome players, the more games they are able to ruin for other players. Credit where it's due, Blizzard has been making a lot of progress dealing with cheaters and even implemented a new system that allows them to cancel a match that's already in progress if a cheater is detected. One of the problems though is that there's always new stuff being created and the auto detector isn't going to be able to find it all. So at that point it's up to the players to report the person and if enough people do then finally that cheater will get punished. Unfortunately, there's going to be a bit of a delay between when that person started cheating and when they finally get banned. And in the meantime, they're going to ruin dozens and dozens of matches. For throwers, the situation is far more difficult and in many cases impossible for an automated system to detect. If someone is suddenly losing hundreds of points very quickly, then yeah, that can set off alarm. And Jeff Kaplan even confirmed that they have employees at Blizzard dedicated to trying to find those people doing that sort of behavior, specifically with the new roll queue system. However, if someone is throwing in just one or two matches every once in a while, then that person will likely be completely undetected by an automated system. But he's still ruining matches nonetheless. And no one wants to lose, but if it was a good match, then most people will accept it. But losing because someone is deliberately trying to ruin the match is extremely frustrating and I think a lot more common than Blizzard is going to be willing to admit. After all, how many times have you seen someone in a match throwing because they couldn't play the character they wanted to, or because someone else was playing a character that they didn't like, or maybe they weren't getting healed enough, or whatever, They're, the list goes on and on. I'm sure all of you have your own stories, and you've probably seen it quite a few times. There are two types of throwing, hard throwing and soft throwing. Hard throwing is the obvious stuff, jumping off the map, may using ice wall to block up the spawn room, that sort of deal. Soft throwing is a little more difficult to recognize as the entire point of soft throwing is the player is trying to lose the match for their team without looking like they're trying to lose the match because they don't want to get reported. While this may be hard to see during the match, in a replay it's very easy to notice. Here's a good example of what soft throwing might look like. This video is a reenactment of something that actually did happen in one of my matches a long time ago before the replay system existed. Two players were arguing about an enemy foul up because neither one of them could deal with him, so one of the players switched to McCree. Now, as I was waiting to respawn, I was watching this player through his point of view, and this is what I saw. The McCree was not actually trying to hit the Farah. For everyone else in the match, it looked like he just had bad aim. But when I was watching through his perspective, I could very clearly see he was keeping his crosshair away from the Farah and just attacking at random. He gave the illusion that he was trying, but in reality, he was trying to lose the match in order to spite the other person that he had been arguing with. And by the way, we did end up losing that match. Now, believe it or not, this kind of stuff is way way more common than you might think. 
The point I'm trying to make here is that ruining even one match is one too many, but we also need to be certain that the person is deliberately trying to be disruptive as opposed to just having bad aim. And this is where Blizzard's current system falls short. Sure, they have those employees who are looking for those players who are dropping hundreds and hundreds of points in order to grief and smurf in the lower ranks, but the people that are just throwing one match here or there, a lot of those players are falling right through the cracks and they're getting away with it. Now, it's not reasonable to expect Blizzard to hire thousands upon thousands of employees that do nothing but review this game footage. At the same time, the automated system is inadequate to handle this problem. So the solution is crowdsourcing a player review system. I present to you the Overwatch Agents program. The new replay system is amazing. Right now, there isn't a way to save or share the matches, but Blizzard has already expressed an interest in allowing players to do this. I feel it's only a matter of time before this happens. And when it does, Blizzard should be able to make a system where matches can be saved when players get reported. This will then allow other players to review that gameplay and determine whether or not that person was actually committing a bannable offense. If you're familiar with CSGO and their Overwatch system that's present in that game, you'll likely already have a good idea of where I'm going with this. Let's get started by going over what would be required to become an Overwatch agent. Blizzard can't have every single player as an Overwatch agent. There needs to be criteria. So first, your account must be in good standing. This means that your account has not been punished within, let's say, the last six months or so as a result of reports for cheating, gameplay sabotage, all that sort of stuff. Now, I want to clarify and emphasize that if you get your account suspended for 10 minutes as a result of you accidentally disconnecting from a competitive match, that does not count as part of this punishment or affect the good standing. You wouldn't be disqualified simply because your power went out that one time. You need to actually get reported and then punished. Second thing is the account must have the Blizzard SMS Protect enabled as an added level of verification on the account. The account must be at least six months old. This last thing isn't a requirement, it's more of a note, but there wouldn't be any rank requirement for being in the Overwatch Agents program. Valve, which runs the CSGO system, has done quite a bit of research on theirs, and they discovered that the accuracy in their program is not related to what rank the player is. They found that even lower rank players can be just as accurate as the best players when reviewing this footage, and therefore, I don't think a rank requirement would be necessary for the Overwatch system either. Now let's run through how this process works. We start with a match, and a player is reported for throwing. This generates a case. Now Blizzard might require it so that it's only one player who needs to make the report, possibly two or three, but regardless, you get a player who is reported, and then the system generates a case for that player. That match is then saved and put into a queue where agents will be able to review the gameplay. The agents will watch the match from the perspective of the player who was reported. The amount of time could be the entire match, or possibly only certain sections. After reviewing the match, the agent will vote if they think that the player was guilty of one or more of several things, including cheating, throwing, etc. Something incredibly important that I need to emphasize is the verdict isn't reached by a single agent voting. It is the result of many agents voting. I would say at least a hundred or more and each agent's vote carries a certain weight to it, which I'll explain more on that in a minute here. If the majority of agents think the player is innocent, then the case gets thrown out. If the agents are split and half think he's guilty and half think he's innocent, then the benefit of the doubt is given to the player, and once more, the case is thrown out. However, if the overwhelming majority of the agents agree that the player did something wrong, then the player will receive a ban. The severity of this ban will be determined by other factors. For example, a first event will be less severe than someone who has already been banned three or four times, etc, etc. Let's go a little more in depth on how the voting itself works. Each vote has a weight that is determined by the accuracy of the agent who is making the vote. All agents will start with a very low weight to their votes. As they correctly vote on these cases, the weight of the agent's vote goes higher. For example, an agent with a very high accuracy says that a player is guilty, and another agent with a very low accuracy says the player is innocent. 
the system is going to lean towards the agent with the high accuracy because they've proven to be accurate in the past. Agents with a high accuracy are going to be given more cases to review than agents with low accuracy, as you clearly want to have the more reliable agents handling a lot more of these reviews. There is going to be separate votes for cheating and gameplay sabotage, plus whatever else Blizzard wants to add to that. This means at the end of a case review, the agent needs to decide if the player was cheating, yes or no, and then if the player was throwing, yes or no. The player could be guilty of both, guilty of only one, or innocent of both. This is what the CSGO system looks like to give you an example. And as mentioned earlier, only if the overwhelming majority vote guilty will the player be punished. For agent accuracy purposes, those close results that are thrown out because it's a split decision will not count as bad or good for either side. In the case of those split decisions, it will have no impact on any of the agents who are voting in that case. Occasionally, Blizzard should include random testing to the agents. This is what Valve does in their system for CSGO. They take cases that were determined to be not guilty in the past, and they give them to agents randomly to test them. These tests will have an impact on the agent's accuracy and the vote weight, but will not have any effect on the player being reviewed. There are a few key important items that Blizzard would need to make sure they include if they were to implement a system like this. The first is that in-game text would need to be included in order to help determine gameplay sabotage. I don't know if they're capable of having voice comms included as well, my guess is that they probably can't, but at a minimum, in-game text needs to be included, and I think they already saved this for other report cases, so it shouldn't be an issue for them to just include it in these. And the reason why I would say that you would need to include this in-game text is that often players who decide to throw will brag about it in text chat. If a player says you need to switch off such and such or I'm going to throw, then it makes it a whole lot easier for the agents reviewing that gameplay. They would also need to include when players join and leave voice chat and when they leave the game. Often before someone decides to throw a match, they will abruptly leave voice chat and switch to another character. This doesn't mean it's always throwing, but it's a piece of the puzzle that the agent can use to help determine whether or not the player actually was throwing. Here are some examples showing exactly what I was talking about. This guy right here didn't like having a Mercy on his team. He wanted different supports, and because the supports wouldn't change, he decided to throw. This guy should get a very long ban for that. And then this one right here, he didn't like a three stack on the team, and he decided to just abruptly leave the match. This is why leaving the match is important, and keeping that text in the game is important, because you can see he admits to why he's leaving the match, and then he does it, which causes the other five people on his team to lose. Now, you might think, well, hold on, he gets that 50 SR penalty and a 10-minute suspension. Let me ask you, do you really think a 10-minute suspension is a good enough punishment for him causing five other people on his team to lose somewhere in the range of 22 to 26 something SR, that's not a good enough punishment. That 50 SR and 10 minute suspension is not for people like this guy who deliberately threw the match and caused his entire team to lose. That 10 minute suspension is for people who accidentally get disconnected. That's why it's so lenient. And it only becomes a lot more severe if you repeatedly lose matches again and again and again. This guy deserves way more than minus 50 SR and a 10 minute suspension. Next on that list of things that would need to be included are the player ranks. The reason for this is that the gameplay footage of a GM or a top 500 player who is throwing or goofing off might often resemble something that you would see in a lower rank who is genuinely trying. And it's important that the agents know the rank of that player they are reviewing so that they can tell the difference between a, let's say, a bronze player who just makes an honest mistake versus a GM player doing something wrong on purpose. And next, all the names would need to be replaced with random placeholders. Again, we can take a look at the CSGO version, and they refer to the player being reviewed as the suspect, and everyone else in the game is given a random name. In Blizzard's Overwatch, the person being reviewed could get something like Possible Talon Member, and then everyone else in the game is simply referred to as whatever their character name is. Reinhardt, or Hanzo, or Doomfist, whatever it is, right? 
Now, the system will work best if the full game is provided and the agent has the ability to play and rewind certain sections in order to double check things. That's actually one of the problems that I ran into when I was using the system in CSGO because if I wanted to see a certain thing that went by quickly, then there was no rewind function and I would have to go through the entire report all over again and it was just frustrating. So being able to forward and rewind during the review would probably be a good idea. The next thing to address is a question that I'm sure some of you have. Why would I bother wasting my time watching these reviews when I could just, you know, play the game and have fun myself? So let's talk about some rewards because the CSGO system does have rewards as well. So for this game, being an Overwatch agent would probably take somewhere between 5 and 10 minutes for each review that, again, you could be using to play the game itself. So it's important that there's some kind of reward in place. Now, the obvious thing would be to give experience for finishing a review or grant points towards your endorsement rank with extra points being rewarded for having high accuracy. Because, you know, the higher your endorsement rank is, the more bonus loot boxes you end up getting every time that stuff rolls around. Now, another possibility could be special cosmetic items like icons, sprays, or even a skin. The players that regularly participate in the agent program and maintain a certain level of accuracy should get some sort of recognition for their efforts. The rewards could be linked to a progression system. After reviewing 10 cases, you get an icon. 50 is a spray, 200 is an emote, 500 could be an epic skin, or maybe even a legendary. And I don't think that's asking too much, because remember, reviewing 500 cases is going to take you quite a while. And I know what some of you are thinking right now. What's going to stop people from just trying to speed through those cases and just voting whatever they want anytime they want? Well, if they do that, they're going to have very low accuracy. And the lower accuracy you have, the less cases you get. So if a person is just trying to rush through them, then their accuracy is going to keep dropping and dropping and dropping until they don't even get sent any more cases anymore. So you're not going to be able to hit that 500 because you did such a bad job of reviewing all the other ones. So if your goal is to just speed through and try to get the skin, it's not going to happen. But of course, the biggest reward for all of the agents and the entire Overwatch community is that all of those throwers and the cheaters and all the troublemakers are going to be dealt with much more quickly and effectively. And the result is better matches and a better community for everyone. Now let's talk potential concerns because with any new system, it's always good to look at what could go wrong. The first question is, what's to stop players from just rushing through and voting whatever they want? Isn't that going to ruin it? The answer is no for a few reasons. I kind of already answered this with the reward system. Remember, if you're rushing through and you're just putting whatever, then you're going to have a very low accuracy, which means your vote is going to have a very low weight, which means you're going to receive less and less cases, until finally your accuracy and your reliability drops to the point where Blizzard probably is just not going to either give you any cases at all, or just removes you from the system. So the next thing is, well, what if people are only interested in getting the rewards? Well, in order to get those rewards, you need to have a high accuracy. And if you have a high accuracy, it means that you're helping to get rid of troublesome players. So even if you're doing it kind of selfishly to get the rewards, as long as you have a high accuracy and as long as you're a reliable agent, then it doesn't matter. It's win-win all around. You get the stuff you want, and everybody else has less bad players to deal with. I don't see a problem with that. Now, what if an agent doesn't quite know what to look for? Upon joining the agent's program, Blizzard would need to require all of those players to watch a variety of tutorials going through all of the different things that they should be looking for in regard to throwing, cheating, as well as providing some examples to all of that stuff. Because the thing is, before an agent reviews even their very first case, that player should have a very good understanding of what it is they're looking for in these cases. In conclusion, I don't think that this Overwatch Agents program could pop up overnight. I realize that it would take a decent amount of work on the part of Blizzard in order to put something like this into place. However, a significant part of the system is already done. The match replay system has already been made and it works great. And if Blizzard really wanted to see improvement in cleaning up the competitive ladder, then they need to do more than what they currently are. Throwers are a really, really big problem, and they're just not going to have enough people, enough employees to review 
all that footage. So why not let us help? We can help you. Put the system in place and we'll be able to work with you to find all these people who are ruining the matches and get rid of them and make the Overwatch community better for everyone. Once more, it would be great if Blizzard was made aware of all this, so please hit that like and share the video. Thanks for watching, and if you'd like to see more, subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Also, come hang out in my Discord server and my Twitch live stream. Special thanks to my Patreon supporters. If you'd like to see what kind of cool VIP rewards you can get, check the links down below. And remember, always, always blame the controller because it's never your fault.